We are here today to celebrate and memorialize the gravesite service for our first president of Mississippi Valley State University, Daddy James Herbert White and Mama Augusta Charter White. As our motto said, a past to remember, a future to mold. Of course, we know we have the right person in place to mold this future because he started molding it about four years ago. Dr. White had a vision. And that vision was to make the quality of life better for us living in the poorest area, so they say, of Mississippi. And that was on Mississippi Vocational College campus, located in Itabina, Mississippi. Daddy White was here to build an institution on a track of land that produced really only cotton before. Many thought this was a pipe dream. What did you think? if you were around, because more than 18,000 alumnus have realized his dream cannot be forgotten, because they can't imagine what their lives would be if it had not been for MVCMVSU. We are standing on these unsettled waters that President White spoke about in his last public speech. And we are so honored to be standing here to celebrate where our forefathers laid the foundation for us. President White often reminded his girls and boys, as he would call them, we, for a long time, we didn't know that he was talking about G-I-R-L-S, but he would refer to us as his girls and boys. And when he spoke, believe me, we stood in attention because those were his students that he cared so much about. He reminded us once that we should do all we can while we can because there would come a time when we couldn't do those things. He reminded us of Jane Adams, who graduated and six months after she graduated, she was told by her physician that she had only six months to live. She decided if I only have six months to live, I'm gonna do what I can while I can. And then she forgot and kept working and working and working. And she forgot that she only had six months to live. She forgot to die. And President White would always remind us that we all should live and forget to die. Don't stop doing anything that you can do. We remembered all of those things because we became lost in our education, even though we didn't realize we were being educated for the future. He often reminded us that the clock of time is, is wound but one time, and no man knows where it will stop. It may be late or it may be early, and that's when we come to realize that we have only one goal, one team, and one back. Thank you. Reading of the biographies, First Lady Augusta White, Miss Linda Thompson Moore, who is the Vice President of the Greenwood Itabina Alumni Chapter, Delta Sigma Beta Sorority Incorporated. And second will be Ms. Thelma Hubbard, President of the Greenwood Itabina Alumni Chapter, Delta Sigma Beta Sorority Incorporated. Founding President, Dr. James Herbert White, by Mr. Marvin Jones, the bachelor for the Beta Rho Chapter, Omega Psi Phi Fraternity Incorporated. I am indeed honored to be on the great campus of Mississippi Valley State University to share in the memorial observance and commemoration of the life of Augusta Charter White, a devoted member of our grand and glorious sisterhood 
who has now entered into the Omega Omega chapter. I bring greetings on behalf of the Greenwood Itabina Alumni Chapter of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated. Would all members of Delta Sigma Theta please stand as we reflect on the life of our beloved Sorority. Mrs. Augusta Charter White. In 1902, as a little Southern girl growing up in Mount Pleasant, Tennessee, I believe Augusta knew she was special, but she was different from other little children. Undoubtedly, I believe she was well-liked and well-rounded but often stood up and stood out. I believe she was destined and purposely positioned to do great things. I believe she knew her life was set on a course of service, leadership, and empowerment with an uncompromising commitment to public service. I believe she, if she were here today, she would exude an air of accomplishment, gratification, and astute pride. Then the little Southern girl grew up. Augusta Charter met and married the love of her life, Dr. James Herbert White. On November 22nd, 1926, she became Mrs. Augusta Charter White. I believe she knew she would be a good wife and even a good mother. I believe she knew she could make a powerful impact in the world as well as on the campus through the combined efforts of others rather than just laboring alone. I believe she knew that her value system was uncompromisable, although it was tested quite often. I also believe she understood and desired to do something magnificent, that she could be the somebody who could change the world and who could do something and build something great. She was a committed trailblazer. Knowing what I believe is true, we all can see the evidence of what she believed today. Let us ascertain the impact of those beliefs. Augusta Charter White, the creative first lady, who co-authored the alma mater of Mississippi Valley State University and the enduring first lady who stood beside her husband and founding president on February 15, 1950 at the groundbreaking ceremony of Mississippi Valley College, now State University. A day that has become a historical footprint in the heritage of this university to be celebrated forever. What a past to remember, a future to mold. In her role as First Lady, Augusta Charter White was passionate in the pursuit of the development of this university, earning her the affectionate name, Mama White. What a past to remember, a future to mold. It was Mama White's persistence, philosophy, and passionate pursuit of excellence, hailing from her uncompromising value system, which created an interwoven bond of devotion, indefinitely weaved into the founding depths of distinction at Mississippi Valley. What a past to remember, a future to mold. Mama White's incredible vigor and determination were equally shared within our sorority, 
She was relentless in the crusade to uphold the principles and the ideals of Delta Sigma Theta. In the early years of Delta on this campus, Sora Augusta Charter White served on various committees, including May Week, Jabberwock, and Founders Day. What a past to remember, a future to mold. She participated in various Delta-sponsored activities, such as Ring the Bell for Mental Health, the Sickle Cell Anemia Testing Project, and volunteering her time and support to the LaFleur County Mental Health Association. What a past to remember, a future to mold. On December 14, 1963, our beloved server, Augusta Charter White, was one of the 16 visionary women who felt a quenchless zeal to answer the call of leadership and empowerment entering into a lifetime commitment of sisterhood, service, and scholarship. She was one of 16 charter members of the Greenwood Indabina Alumni Chapter of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated. What a past to remember, a future to mold. The impact of the life of Augusta Charter White is etched into the history of Mississippi Valley State University. Her legacy lives on in the members of Delta Sigma Theta. And she set a great precedent within her family that her children, grandchildren, great-grandchildren, and great-great-grandchildren can all boastfully share. What a past to remember, a future to mold. Though death has removed our beloved Sora from this place and from the lives of Delta Sigma Theta in 1993. Those of us who knew her, were close to her, close to Mama White, will continue to embrace her legacy, remember her kindred spirit, and follow in her influence as a source of continued inspiration. As we press toward the mark, we shall never forget Augusta Charter White, daughter, wife, mother, first lady, grandmother, civic leader, public servant, visionary, sister, and charter member. It is now befitting that we reflect on the life of Augusta Charter White. Her past to remember this university's future to mold. Thank you. I don't know. I can tell you I was excited about being here this morning. Cause on last night, I dreamed I overslept <laughs> and didn't wake up until seven o'clock tonight and missed the whole program. But I'm here today and on that note, I say good morning. Good morning. Not to take away from the program, will all members of Omega Psi Phi Fraternity Incorporated will you please stand. We want to recognize and announced that we did celebrate our 55th year here on campus with Beta Row Chapter of Mega Sci Fi Fraternity this past Tuesday on April 18, 2017. Now we stand on behalf of our honored brother, Dr. James Herbert White, president and founder of Mississippi Vocational College. Dr. White was born April the 13th, 1903, in Gatlin, Tennessee. He had his first job at eight, working for 75 cents a week and learning all about photography. In addition to that job, he worked for a dry cleaning establishment that paid no money, but provided cleaning and pressing of his clothes. On weekends, he shined shoes 
and was known as the best shoe shine boy at Warren's Barbershop. After completing high school, he went to Indianapolis to work in an automobile parts shop. He was only 14 years old, but there was no high school in Gatlin. In Indianapolis, he earned $14.95 per week. Eventually, he returned home and enrolled at Tennessee College in, in the elementary and high school departments. It was called a and Normal at the time. He revealed his leadership abilities by organizing a quartet called the National Harmony Four and negotiated a contract with Western Vaudeville Company. He traveled with the Glee Club, played an instrument, served as an assistant band director. In 1924, he graduated from a and Normal Department and secured a position as an assistant principal at Gatlin High School. On, on November 22, 1926, he married Augusta Charter, daughter of Joseph and Emma Hodges Charter. Their marriage was an important social event. They were both teachers and both taught in different towns as they were only able to see each other when school was out. In 1928, he and Augusta went to Elkhart, Indiana to work during the summer. The whites became butler and maid for O.P. Bassett and his family. While working there, they received a telegram informing Herbert that he had been elected principal of Hardeman County Training School in Whiteville, Tennessee. He accepted the position and held it for the next 20 years. At the time, he took a job at Hardeman and Augusta was making $65 a month and he was making $40 a month. He knew he had to continue his education and this position provided that benefit. He spent his summers attending school in Nashville. When he accepted the position at Whiteville, it was a dilapidated building. There were six teachers housing eight grades and a mortgage of $5,600. There was neither indoor plumbing nor electricity. During his tenure, the school debt was cleared and through the philanthropic connections, and the school became a four-year high school. Teachers of higher caliber were recruited from well-known colleges and universities such as Michigan, Indiana, Massachusetts, and New York. In addition, the school was renamed Allen White High School. As a result of his outstanding accomplishment, Dr. White was offered a position at Lane College in Jackson, Tennessee. Lane, too, was written and had no accreditation. When he assumed the position of president in 1948, Dr. White took on an additional challenge of clearing up the school's debt, and in 1949, Lane College was awarded its first A rating by the Committee of Accreditation. On this achievement, Dr. White accepted a greater challenge, that of president of Mississippi Vocational College, today known as Mississippi Valley State University. Thank you. All of this world, troubles of the world, troubles of this world. Soon I will be done with the trouble of the world going home to live with God no more. No more!